Before TikTok trends and streaming giants, there was a nose twitch that captivated America. Bewitched, the groundbreaking sitcom that blended magic with mundane, premiered in 1964 and promptly cast a spell on audiences nationwide. This enchanting tale of a witch navigating suburban life became a cultural touchstone, proving that even the most whimsical concepts can resonate with millions. Let's revisit the magical world of Bewitched and discover what its spellbinding stars have been conjuring up since the credits rolled. Number 1. Elizabeth Montgomery as Samantha Stevens Samantha's laughter was like sunshine breaking through clouds, warming everyone around her. Her eyes held a mischievous sparkle that hinted at the magic within. She was a witch, yes, but not your typical cackling kind. Her magic was often subtle, a sprinkle of enchantment in everyday life. Beneath the cheerful exterior, though, there was a depth, a sense of something more complex brewing beneath the surface. Elizabeth Montgomery was far more than just the actress behind Samantha Stevens on Bewitched. While the iconic witch role made her a household name, her career was rich with variety, personal growth, and lasting contributions to television and culture. As Samantha, Elizabeth charmed audiences with her portrayal of a witch trying to live a normal suburban life, even though a bit of magic always seemed to sneak in. With just a twitch of her nose, she turned domestic chaos into something extraordinary. Bewitched became a huge hit, and Montgomery earned multiple Emmy and Golden Globe nominations. By the time the show ended, she was forever linked with the role of Samantha, a character that became a television legend. But Elizabeth Montgomery wasn't content to be known for just one role. After Bewitched, she made a point to take on roles that showed off her range as an actress. She carefully chose parts that helped her break away from being typecast, proving that she was much more than just a sitcom star. Elizabeth Montgomery had a pretty wild love life. She got married a few times, first to some guy named Frederick, but that didn't last long. Then she married this famous actor, Gig Young, but that ended in divorce too. After that, she married a director named William Asher, and they had three kids. Two of her pregnancies even showed up on her TV show, Bewitched. Later on, she fell for another director, Richard Michaels, and they ended up together. It was a messy breakup, but they moved in together for a while. She finally settled down with an actor named Robert Foxworth, but sadly, she died a few years later. There was even some drama with another actor, Alexander Godunov. They were seeing each other, but it ended badly. He died right around the same time as Elizabeth. Elizabeth grew up spending summers in a place called Patterson, New York. It was like her happy place, and her mom lived there later on. Samantha Stevens played by Elizabeth Montgomery when she was 31 years old. Sadly, at 8.22 a.m. Pacific time on the morning of May 18, 1995, Montgomery died in her sleep at home. Eight weeks after her diagnosis, and 33 days after her birthday. She was 62 years old. Number 2. Dick York as Darren Stevens A workaholic by nature, Darren's life was a relentless pursuit of efficiency. His days were a rigid cadence of meetings, deadlines, and the intoxicating thrill of another closed deal. The office was his sanctuary, a realm where logic reigned supreme. So when a witch materialized in his meticulously ordered world, chaos became his unwelcome roommate. Mornings, once predictable as the sunrise, now resembled a three-ring circus, complete with flying objects and a mother-in-law who seemed to revel in his discomfort. Dick York's journey in entertainment started early when he captured hearts as the all-American boy, Jack Armstrong, on Chicago radio. This early break led him smoothly into the world of Broadway in the mid-1950s, where he shined in productions like Tea and Sympathy and Bus Stop, quickly making a name for himself as a rising star. In the late 50s, York became a familiar face on television. He didn't stick to just one type of role. Instead, he showed his range with standout guest spots on shows like The Twilight Zone, Wagon Train, and Alfred Hitchcock Presents. 
His ability to move seamlessly between radio, stage, TV, and film made him a well-rounded performer, admired by many. While Bewitched is what brought York into the national spotlight, his career was much more than just that. It was a journey that highlighted his diverse talents and left a lasting mark on the entertainment world. Darren Stevens was played by Dick York when he was 36 years old. Sadly, York died of complications from emphysema at Blodgett Hospital in East Grand Rapids, Michigan on February 20, 1992, at age 63. Number 3. Agnes Moorhead, as Endora Endora was a tempest in a teapot, a hurricane of sass and supernatural spite. Armed with a wit as sharp as a sorceress's spell, she navigated the mortal world with a disdainful amusement. Rules were mere suggestions to her, and conformity a concept as foreign as anti-gravity. Love her or loathe her, one couldn't ignore the magnetic force of her personality. Endora was chaos personified, a comet streaking through the mundane, leaving a trail of laughter, exasperation, and undeniable entertainment in her wake. With four Oscar nominations under her belt, Agnes Moorhead was no mere mortal. From the dramatic heights of Citizen Kane to the comedic depths of Bewitched, she conquered every role she touched. Born in 1900, Moorhead's career kicked off in 1941 with a powerful debut as Mary Kane in the classic film Citizen Kane. This was just the beginning. She quickly established herself in Hollywood with a wide range of roles across different genres. But her talent wasn't confined to the big screen. Moorhead was also a force on the radio, where her voice brought countless characters to life. On stage, she left audiences in awe with her commanding performances. She even made her mark on TV's The Twilight Zone, adding another impressive credit to her resume. In 1948, Moorhead made history by becoming the first woman to co-host the Oscars, sharing the spotlight with Dick Powell, a clear sign of her influence in the industry. By the late 1950s and early 1960s, television became another major outlet for her talents. While she appeared in various series, it was her role as Endora on Bewitched that truly made her a household name. As the quirky and often exasperating mother of Samantha Stevens, Moorhead created a character that became iconic. Despite her success, she reportedly felt typecast by the role. Even so, Agnes Moorhead's career was much more than any single part. She was a powerhouse who captivated audiences across multiple platforms, leaving a legacy that goes far beyond bewitched. Endora played by Agnes Moorhead when she was 64 years old. Unfortunately, Moorhead died of uterine cancer on April 30, 1974, in Rochester, Minnesota, age 73. Number 4. David White as Larry Tate Larry Tate was the ultimate salesman, the kind of guy who could sell anything to anyone, whether it was ice to Eskimos or a bow tie to a cat. His knack for adapting to any situation was both impressive and a little unsettling. Even with all the craziness that came with being best friends with Darren, Larry stayed grounded and reliable. He was the one constant in a world full of magic, witches, and the occasional flying saucer, always loyal and there to bring a sense of normalcy to Darren's life. In the magical world of Bewitched, where anything could happen, David White's portrayal of Larry Tate provided a steady, reassuring presence. As Samantha's down-to-earth boss and neighbor, he brought a sense of normalcy to the chaos, turning what started as a recurring role into a key part of the show. But Larry Tate, was just one chapter in White's long and varied acting career. He was a seasoned actor with a rich history on television, appearing in everything from the tough world of The Untouchables to the eerie stories of The Twilight Zone. White had a talent for adapting to different genres, proving his versatility time and again. White's influence went beyond the roles he played. His ability to bring a wide range of characters to life, whether ordinary or extraordinary, earned him respect in the industry. 
While his role as Larry Tate is likely his most remembered, it's important to appreciate the full scope of his talent and the lasting mark he left on television. Larry Tate played by David White when he was 13 years old. Sadly, he died of a heart attack on November 27, 1990, in North Hollywood, California, aged 74. Number 5. Aaron Murphy as Tabitha Stevens Tabitha was a whirlwind of curiosity, a tiny tornado of questions and experiments. Her mind was a playground of wonder, a place where the ordinary morphed into the extraordinary with a sprinkle of magic. Like a young alchemist, she brewed potions from household items, transforming the mundane into moments of enchantment. With each new discovery, her eyes sparkled with a delight that was infectious reminding everyone that even the smallest spark of curiosity can ignite a world of wonder. No matter what role, Erin Murphy never failed to cause uncontrollable laughter throughout her film career. Erin Murphy started her career with roles in the comedy Easy Money alongside Rodney Dangerfield and appeared in shows like Earth 2 and Just Shoot Me. She continued to build her resume with parts in Spin City, the drama Dogtown, and Inside Schwartz. Murphy also took on roles in movies like Joe Dirt, Dickie Roberts, former child star, and the action comedy Grind with Mike Vogel. More recently, she appeared in Surge of Power with John T. Venturini. Throughout her career, Erin Murphy brought laughter and charm to her performances. Despite starting as a child actor, she stood out in a competitive field, even winning roles over stars like Helen Hunt and Jodie Foster. Although she's best known for her iconic role as Tabitha in Bewitched, Murphy's talent extends beyond that, with appearances in TV movies and series like Lassie, The Comeback Kids, and most recently, TV Therapy, where she revisited her beloved Bewitched character. Erin Murphy didn't just shine on TV, she also made a name for herself in over 80 commercials, including one memorable detergent ad with Ronald Reagan. Her career highlights not only her knack for comedy, but also her ability to adapt to different roles, making her a lasting figure in entertainment. In her personal life, she's a busy woman. She writes about fashion, beauty, and fancy stuff for magazines. On top of that, she's a motivational speaker and helps out charities. She's also really into alpacas, raising them on her fancy ranch in California and even making clothes out of their wool. Oh, and she's got a pretty amazing love life, or at least it's been interesting. She's been married a few times and has a bunch of kids. Can you believe she bought a beach house in Malibu? Talk about living the dream. Tabitha Stevens played by Aaron Murphy when she was two years old, and now she is 59 years old. Number six. George Tobias as Abner Kravitz Abner was the chillest dude on the block. He loved hanging out on his porch, sipping sweet tea. His wife, Gladys, was the total opposite. Always sticking her nose where it didn't belong, especially when it came to the Stevens house. Abner was always telling her to knock it off, but he was more worried about keeping the peace than figuring out what weird stuff was going on next door. Even though Gladys was a pain, Abner was always apologizing to Darren and Samantha. He was that kind of neighbor everyone wants. Abner's not exactly a stickler. He's just down to earth. But there's something about the chaos at the Stevens house that doesn't sit right with him. Maybe it's the furniture that keeps vanishing or the mischievous glint in Samantha's eye. Whatever it is, Abner senses there's more going on than meets the eye. He's got a knack for sniffing out trouble and he's determined to uncover what's really behind the seemingly perfect facade. Back in the day, actors like George Tobias didn't just stroll into Hollywood and land a lifetime of quirky sidekick roles by chance. Studios like Warner Brothers were like training grounds for actors, churning out movies and offering steady work to guys like Tobias. Thanks to that system, he got parts in classics like Yankee Doodle Dandy and Sergeant York. When television came along, Tobias made the jump seamlessly. While he's probably best known today for his role in Bewitched, he kept busy well into the 70s and even scored a role in a Bewitched spin-off called Tabitha. 
Abner Kravitzer, played by George Tobias, when he was 64 years old. On February 27, 1980, Tobias died of bladder cancer at age 78 at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Number 7. Casey Rogers as Louise Tate Louise Tate was no mere housewife. She was a strategic mastermind with a killer smile. Behind the polished facade of suburban life, she was a force to be reckoned with, navigating the treacherous waters of Larry's career with the finesse of a seasoned diplomat. Far from being a mere appendage to her husband's success, she was his equal, her sharp wit and keen intuition often proving more valuable than any sales pitch. Louise understood the power of image, of connection, of the unspoken word. She was the silent architect of their prosperity, a woman who could command a room without saying a word. Born Imogene Rogers in Missouri, she took on the stage name Laura Elliott when she started her Hollywood career in 1949. Under this name, she landed a key role in Alfred Hitchcock's classic thriller, Strangers on a Train, where she played the scheming Miriam Haynes. This role helped establish her place in film history. By 1956, she went back to her childhood nickname and became Casey Rogers. This change marked a shift towards television, where she found significant success. One of her standout roles was in the groundbreaking soap opera Peyton Place, which began in 1964. Two years later, she joined the cast of Bewitched, stepping into the role of Louise Tate, Samantha's boss's wife, previously played by Irene Vernon. Casey Rogers' career is a testament to her versatility. She made a name for herself in both Hollywood films and television, leaving a lasting impression with her performances and solidifying her legacy in the entertainment industry. Louise Tate played by Casey Rogers when she was 41 years old. Sadly, she then suffered a stroke and died in Los Angeles, California on July 6, 2006, aged 80. Number 8. Sandra Gould as Gladys Kravitz Gladys Kravitz was the queen of snooping. She was always peeking over the fence at the Stevens place, thinking something weird was going on. But Samantha was a pro at covering up the magic stuff, always coming up with crazy excuses. Poor Gladys never knew what to believe. It drove her nuts. She'd try to tell everyone about the strange things she saw, but nobody ever listened. It was like she was losing her mind. Sometimes when Gladys would go way too far, like calling the cops or something, Samantha would lose it and blame everything on her. From her living room window, Gladys takes on hilarious detective missions. Convinced that the seemingly perfect Stevens are hiding something, maybe something magical. Her nosy antics and wild theories add a fun twist to the otherwise smooth life of Samantha next door. For five seasons on Bewitched, Sandra Gould nailed the role of the nosy neighbor Gladys Kravitz, who became a classic example of a lovable busybody. Even though she didn't get many awards during the show, TV Land gave her a well-deserved nod years later for her memorable role. Gould's comedic chops were on display even before Bewitched. She first showed off her timing on I Married Joan, where her portrayal of Mildred Webster made her a sought-after sitcom actress. She shared the screen with comedy greats like Lucille Ball, Danny Thomas, and Jack Benny. Her collaboration with Benny wasn't just for TV. They'd been perfecting their comedic act together on the radio for 15 years. Though she dabbled in film and drama, comedy was where Gould truly shined. Her career is a testament to her remarkable humor and enduring impact on entertainment. She wasn't just a nosy neighbor, she was a comedic powerhouse who kept audiences laughing for years. Gladys Kravitz played by Sandra Gould when she was 48 years old. Sadly, Gould died on July 20th, 1999, in Burbank, California, of a stroke following heart surgery, three days before her 83rd birthday, number nine. Marion Lorne as Aunt Clara. Aunt Clara's magic is like opening a bag of surprises. You never know what's gonna pop out. She means well, but her spells are more like happy accidents. 
One minute she's turning frogs into princes, the next she's turning your living room into a jungle. It's crazy, but it's also kind of funny. Aunt Clara teaches us that it's okay to mess up sometimes. Her magic might be a little wonky, but she always makes us laugh. Marion Lorne was a character actress, known for her wide-eyed, endearing performances that went far beyond just sitcoms and magical mishaps. Before making her mark in sitcoms, Lorne showcased her comedic talent on television in shows like Mr. Peepers and Sally. Her performances on these programs were so well-received that they earned her Emmy nominations, reflecting her skillful range and impeccable timing. Additionally, she appeared on Gary Moore's popular variety show, further establishing her presence in the entertainment world. Yet it was her role as Aunt Clara on Bewitched that truly solidified her place in television history. This character, a sweet and bumbling witch with a knack for magical accidents and hilarious misunderstandings, quickly became a fan favorite. Lorne's ability to deliver comedy, especially through her perfectly timed double takes and innocent missteps, brought Aunt Clara to life in a way that endeared her to viewers. Her exceptional work on the show earned her a well-deserved Emmy Award, celebrating her contribution to television comedy. Marion Lorne's career was marked by more than just one memorable role. She was a talented actress whose unique blend of comedic charm and wide-eyed wonder left a lasting impression on television. Her work, particularly as Aunt Clara in Bewitched, remains a cherished part of TV history, showcasing her enduring talent and appeal. Aunt Clara played by Marion Lorne when she was 80 years old. Sadly, Lorne appeared in 27 episodes of Bewitched and was not replaced after she died of a heart attack in her Manhattan apartment on May 9, 1968, aged 84. She was 84 years old. Number 10. Bernard Fox as Dr. Bombay. Dr. Bombay is like that eccentric uncle you love to visit. He's got this magical aura about him, but his spells are more like science experiments gone wild. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they turn things upside down. It's like watching a magician who's still figuring out the tricks. He acts all high and mighty, like he's the top dog in the witch world. But deep down, you can tell he gets a kick out of messing with Darren and the mortals. He's like that mischievous old man who loves to pull pranks. Bernard Fox was more than just a familiar face on TV. He was a talented Welsh actor with a career that spanned an impressive five decades. Growing up in a family with deep roots in theater, Fox's love for acting showed early on. As a young boy, he started out on stage and worked his way up to being a stage manager by his teens. The stage was where he really learned his craft, and it was clear from the start that he was dedicated to acting. Fox's career took off across both movies and TV showing off his wide range of skills. He's best remembered for his role as Dr. Bombay on Bewitched and for playing the sneaky Sergeant Schultz on Hogan's Heroes. He even made a memorable appearance in the hit film Titanic, proving he could excel in a variety of roles. His ability to adapt helped him stay relevant through the changing times in entertainment. Even in his 70s, Fox had a late career boost, landing roles in major films like Titanic and The Mummy, 1999. He wrapped up his acting career shortly after the turn of the century, with his final role on the sitcom Dharma and Greg. Bernard Fox's impact goes beyond just his screen roles. He was a cherished actor who made significant contributions to TV and film over 50 years. His commitment to his craft and his connection with audiences made him a true entertainer, leaving a lasting legacy in the world of entertainment. Dr. Bombay played by Bernard Fox when he was 43 years old. Sadly, on the morning of 14th of December 2016, Fox died of heart failure at Valley Presbyterian Hospital in Van Nuys, California. He was 89 years old. Number 11. Mabel Albertson, as Phyllis Stevens Phyllis, is the kind of mom everyone wishes they had. She's always there with a hug and a listening ear. She's like that warm, cozy blanket on a cold day, 
comforting, and reliable. She's not afraid to show how much she cares. Her love is like a superpower, always there to help you through tough times. She's the rock of the family, the one who holds everything together. When Mabel Albertson was cast at 50 as Mrs. Carter, the mother of young actress Aileen Stanley Jr., in a Warner Brothers Technicolor musical, she had no idea it would mark the start of a remarkable career in film and TV. She soon became known for playing the ultimate haughty, judgmental mother-in-law, or mother, stepmother, or aunt, in a range of movies and TV shows. Her comic talent made these often obnoxious characters truly hilarious. Whether it was as Jerry Lewis's mother-in-law in Don't Give Up the Ship, 1959, George Hamilton's mother in All the Fine Young Cannibals, 1960, or the overbearing mother-in-law in Period of Adjustment, 1962, Albertson brought a memorable charm to her roles. On TV, she brought the same treatment to stars like Tom Ewell, Dick Van Dyke, and Dick Sargent. Even though she was starting to make a name for herself in her 50s, Mabel Albertson wasn't new to showbiz. She had a successful career as a vaudeville performer in the 1920s, a radio star in the 1930s, and a theater actress and director in the 1940s. She had also tried her hand at films in 1928 and 1940, but with little success. Ironically, it was the film industry that had previously overlooked her that would later make her unforgettable from the early 1950s until the late 1970s, when Alzheimer's disease ended her long and successful career. Phyllis Stevens played by Mabel Albertson when she was 63 years old. Mabel Albertson died on September 28, 1982, of Alzheimer's disease at St. John's Hospital after suffering seven years of poor health in Santa Monica, California, at the age of 81. Number 12. Dick Wilson as Drunk The drunk was basically the comic relief of the show. His slurred speech and goofy antics always brought a laugh. He was like that lovable uncle who shows up to family gatherings a little too tipsy. Even though he was always stumbling around and saying silly things, there was something kind of charming about him. He was like a harmless teddy bear who just happened to be drunk. And because he showed up in different episodes, it was like seeing an old friend every time. Dick Wilson was a versatile actor with a busy career across movies, TV shows, and more. You might recognize him from his comedic roles, like in What a Way to Go, with Shirley MacLaine, or as the grumpy old man on Bewitched. He also tackled serious roles, such as in The Twilight Zone and the miniseries Harold Robbins' The Pirate. In addition to his TV work, Wilson appeared in the TV special Barney and Me and had a notable role in the comedy The World's Greatest Athlete with Tim Conway. He starred in TV movies like Getting Away From It All and Better Late Than Never. His television appearances continued with roles on presenting Susan Anton and other projects. In the 1980s, Wilson's career included roles in The Incredible Shrinking Woman with Lily Tomlin, Small and Fry, and The Love Report. He also appeared in Cheech and Chong Get Out of My Room and Camp Midnight. Later on, he wrote and appeared in Earth Matters. Drunk was played by Dick Wilson when she was 49 years old. Wilson died on November 18, 2007, at the Motion Picture and Television Hospital in Woodland Hills, California, at the age of 91. Number 13. Alice Ghostly, as Esmeralda Esmeralda's, like that aunt who means well, but always seems to cause a little chaos. Her magic is hit or miss. More miss than hit most of the time. One sneeze and boom. You've got a room full of frogs but she's so sweet and harmless, you can't help but love her. She's always there to lend a hand, or a spell, whatever the situation calls for. And even though she's a witch, she's got a soft spot for humans, especially the Stevens. She's like that quirky neighbor everyone knows and loves, even if they're not quite sure what to expect next. Whether portraying a glum, withering wallflower, a drab and dowdy housewife, a klutzy maid, or a cynical gossip, eccentric character comedienne Alice Ghostly had the ability to draw laughs from the skimpiest of material with a simple fret or whine. Born in Eve, Missouri and raised in various Midwest towns, 
she started performing at a young age. Encouraged by a high school teacher, she pursued drama at the University of Oklahoma before moving to New York to follow her dreams. Initially working with her sister Gladys in The Ghostly Sisters, Alice soon went solo and built a name for herself as a cabaret singer and comedienne. She took on various odd jobs to support herself, including being a theater usherette and a patch tester while performing in local shows. Her breakthrough came with the Broadway review New Faces of 1952, where she performed the satirical song The Boston Beguine. She continued to make waves on Broadway with roles in shows like Sandhog and The Sign in Sidney Brewstein's Window, the latter earning her a Tony Award. On television, Alice Ghostly became a familiar face with roles in shows like Bewitched, where she played the bumbling witch Esmeralda and designing women as the eccentric Bernice. She also appeared in various dramas, including Perry Mason and To Kill a Mockingbird, and was a frequent panelist on game shows like The Hollywood Squares. In film, Alice was seen in comedies such as My Six Loves and With Six You Get Egg Roll, and had a small role in Grease. Her last Broadway role was as Miss Hannigan in Annie, a part she played for nearly a decade. Alice Ghostly's career spanned several decades, showcasing her remarkable talent across stage, screen, and television. Esmeralda was played by Alice Ghostly when she was 43 years old. Ghostly died at her home in Studio City, California, on September 21, 2007, of colon cancer and a series of strokes bewitched us with its magic. Who was your favorite character, Samantha, Darren, or Endora? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more classic TV rewinds. See you next time.